What is up guys, my name is Chono. welcome to episode 23 of 3D Game Programming in Java. Okay, so it's been a while, I've left you guys for one week, I didn't post an episode last week, and the reason for that is I am really busy right now with school work. I'm, fin I'm not finishing, but I'm starting my last year of school, and it's really important that I, I, I actually do the work for school, which is why I won't have as much time this year as I did last year to post videos. Now. Having said that, I'm not going to say that I'm just going to completely stop. Like that's by no means what I mean. Um, I will be, I will be still posting a video once a week as usual. Okay, that's not going to change. What is going to change is I'm extremely busy for the next few weeks with projects and, and assignments for school. So the deal is, I'm going to teach you guys how to make a GUI. Okay, now. In order for me to actually progress on with the game engine, that requires me to sit down, work out the maths for that, get basically about three to five hours of work done for that, and then I got to, I have to record the video, work out how I'm going to explain how everything works to you guys, um, edit the video, render it, and upload it, which takes all in all about 15 hours for one, I don't know, 40, 50 minute episode. All right, 15 hours. I don't have that time anymore. So what I want to do is teach you guys something that you probably don't know, but I know, and I've been doing this for a while, and this is also something that's been requested a lot, okay? So the thing that we're going to do today, and probably over the next few weeks, is build um, a menu. Or more specifically, actually, first of all, a GUI, a graphical user interface. Alright, so this is one of like the key things in Java. Like, you want to make your own applications in Java, you need to know how to do this. Now, a lot of you probably don't, okay? And, or, a lot of you do, but you know how to do it the complicated way, alright? So, the deal is, first of all, we're going to make like a launcher. So like, you know, in Skyrim or whatever, there's like a launcher first pops up and it gives you the ability to change the graphical settings, you know, options, help, I don't know, en enable a mod or something, um, play the game, exit, straight from like a launcher. Now, ours, ours probably won't look as good as Skyrim's, but it'll just be a basic like a launcher where you hit play to launch the game. Um, and that'll be made with GUI to look like a normal Windows application. Um, after we finish that completely, we're going to move on to actually creating an in-game graphical menu. So for those of you who actually want a menu that's inside the game, or, may or maybe you want both the launcher and the game menu, we'll create that after we make the GUI. And then hopefully by then I'll be free enough to actually work out, you know, stuff like collision and, um, you know, and basically make progress on the actual game engine itself and build up till we finish the game. So this is basically me saying, I'm not going to not post videos for like four to five weeks. I am going to post videos, but instead of posting, you know, instead of not posting videos, I'm going to teach you guys how to do this because you'll want to know this anyway. So let's get uh, let's get on with it. Okay, so, oh god, there's a lot of talking. I have to grab a drink now. Um, we had this last time, right? And uh, we're not actually going to touch this um, this stuff now. What we're going to do is we're going to jump into this... Um, the GUI thing. So I don't have time. <laughs> so this is going to be me basically coding as fast as I can. Our main method, if you guys don't know this, then you probably shouldn't be watching my tutorials. You should be watching the new Bolsons or reading the Java manual. I don't know. Um, <laughs> main method is what gets... This is what happens when we run our game. It executes this code. So we basically what it's doing is it's creating a frame and it's uh, it's it's adding the game content to it and it's starting the game. Okay, that's cool, but we don't want to do that. Let's um, let's control X that. So I'm going to cut all of that. Right, I've just cut everything. And I'm just going to save that class as well. I'm going to make a new class in the Mindfront package, and I'm going to call it um, Launcher. All right. Again, you can call this whatever you like. And I'm going to make a um, a constructor for this class. And I'm going to make sure to spell Launcher right. How do you spell it? Launcher? Um, and then I want to paste all that code in there. And you can see that it's sort of automatically I uh, imported it. Now, title. I think we made that static, so we can just go display our title. Yep, we can. Cool. Um, because title, we made static, so we can access it from, from anywhere. Um, and we still seem to be getting a error, and that's because I didn't close the constructor properly. All right. So uh, yeah, so we basically just copied and pasted that entire code into launcher. Actually, no, I'm completely wrong. Let's uh, let's change this class name to run game. All right. Now, um, if we change the class name, we'll have to. Uh, rename the compilation to it. Sorry, that was my bad completely. This isn't the launcher, this is the actual game. So when we want to run the game, this is the code that we need, alright? Um, so yeah, 
So we basically just popped all of this code into run game. Okay, awesome. Now let's make a new class and we'll call it launcher this time, as we did last time. I'm sorry about that guys, again I'm sort of in a hurry. And this is basically where we're going to put all of our all of our stuff. So first of all, let's just make sure that this is gonna be our launch code. Let's just make sure that it it exchanged it, it extends JFrame, alright? We don't need it to extend canvas, because this isn't gonna be um this isn't gonna be like rendering anything. So in other words we can just make it ex extend um JFrame. Let's import JFrame as well. Um and let's make a um Let's make a constructor, and if you guys don't know how constructors work, you will after this tutorial, I guarantee you. Um, let's just uh, do the basic things, like set title to um, to uh, let's just call it mine front launcher. Um, and notice how I'm not like creating an object of JFrame. I'm not going, you know, JFrame, JFrame. Oh man, I really can't type today. JFrame frame equals new JFrame. Notice how I'm not doing that. That's because oh my god, I really can't type. Um, <laughs> that's because we don't need to do that because this extends JFrame. So that means we can use the methods directly. We don't need to go frame um, dot set title or anything. We don't need to do that. So if we weren't extending JFrame, then we would. You know, it's the same thing. We did that in render as well because this extends render. We can you know we can use width and height just as if they were well you know in here. All right, cool. Let's get back to launcher. Um, Let's actually close render 3D and probably game as well. Um, okay, so title, what else do we need to do? We need to set the size. Let's just set the size to new dimension. Um, what's a good size for a launcher? 240 by 320 is a good size for a launcher. Uh, by the way, if you hit Control shift o that'll automatically import your your stuff. So that's just a, that's just a, uh, a thing. So if you go like new display, actually no, that'll automatically do it, don't worry. Because um, we're, we're in the same package, don't worry. Just wanted to show you guys uh, Control shift o but obviously, I'm not going to do that now. Alright, uh, let's set the default close operation to um, exit on close. Again, we don't need to go jframe.exit on close because we are extending jframe. So you wouldn't go jframe. You could, that won't get it, that won't actually give you an error, but it's pointless. Alright, um, uh, let, uh, let's set the location relative to, oh my, look at that. Seriously? Sorry, I'm really tired right now. I just got back from a uh, convention all day. I had to be there for school. And I'm tired. Alright, that's the that's deal. Um, set location relative to null. What else do we need to do? Set visible true. Set resizable as well. Um, set visible true. Set resizable false. Alright, and that's pretty much... That is pretty much uh, just about it. Alright, cool. Now let's talk about actually... Um, Making our buttons, okay. So at the moment we've got a launcher. Now let's check. Let's check if it works. Let's just go down into here, and just type new launcher. All right, let's run that. So that work. Okay, it worked. Awesome. Um, now notice again how I didn't go. You know, like launcher, launcher equals new launcher. Now you only need to do that, and in fact, if I run this, you'll see that it gives me the exact same result. But the thing is, you only need to actually create an object out of this class if you're going to do something like launcher dot, I don't know, draw or whatever. If you're going to actually use a method inside launcher, then you need to create a, um, a variable out of it, but you don't if, you, if you're not going to. So if I just want to run the constructor, which in this case is this, I only need to go new launcher, all right? And that'll create a new instant, that'll instantiate the launcher class, which obviously points down to its, um, to its constructor. All right, cool. Hope you guys understand that. Um, okay, awesome. Let's um. Okay, let's do a few things. First of all, let's just get started with uh, a method to actually draw the buttons. So I'm gonna go private void uh, draw buttons. And um, yeah, okay, cool. Let's talk about buttons. There are a few different ways of doing this. I'm gonna use a J panel and J button to actually do this stuff. This is, in my experience, probably the easiest way to do this. So let's just make a new J panel first because we need a J panel to store J buttons. Um, we'll call it window and we will uh, set it equal to new J panel. And um, again, Control Shift O will import that for you automatically, so you don't have to wait for the mouse to, you know. Do, do a stuff. Um, and let's also create a few J buttons. So private J button. Uh, let's make a few. Let's call it play. Um, what else do we want in our menu? Options. Um, help, maybe quit. I don't know. About. Um, mods. I don't know. Like just 
we'll, we'll, we'll do these four for now. Again, let's import J buttons. And also, I'm also going to go rectangle. Private rectangle, R play. So, I was going to stand for rectangle and play is going to be the play button. So, for the play button, for the options button, for the help button, and for the quit button. Alright, awesome. Um, now, let's go into here and start actually initializing these variables. Now, at the moment, this will sort of be a null pointer exception. It's the same thing as if we did, um, I don't know, private double. We don't actually need private here, but double. Um, we'll make a double called, uh, I don't know, p. And, and we just do that, you know. We don't set it equal to anything. It's not equaling zero, you know. It's it's a null pointer. It It's not pointing. It's got zero data assigned to it. So we actually need to assign data. So here we went window. We didn't just go window, you know, we didn't do that. We went window equals new J panel. So we set it equal to something. Same thing we have to do for these, obviously. Otherwise, we'll get a null pointer exception if we try and use them. So let's start off with the play button. So play equals new J button. And the J button constructor takes one parameter. And that is the actual title of the uh, thing. So let's call play. And we'll put an exclamation mark there to make it cool. Um, and yeah, so now what we need to do is basically say, OK, we've got a button. Now we have to position it on our screen and, um, and uh, you know, position it on our screen and set a size to it, basically draw it onto our screen. Now before I do that, actually, I'm staring at this thinking, why didn't I make these variables? Let's go up the top and uh, we'll make, um, yeah, we'll make, um, we'll make, uh, to, we'll make private uh, ha width. So we'll make width equal to private int width equal to, again, I'm really tired, guys, I'm sorry. Um, we'll make width and height, and height is 320, all right? And we'll just make sure that that works out. Um, height, God, I really can't type. All right, so we've got this, awesome. Um, so, did I, the hell, did I delete that line? I didn't mean to, okay, awesome, I got it back. I don't know what happened there. Control D seems to delete, delete lines, look at that, it eats them up. Um, anyway, so we've got play. Now let's also instantiate the, the rectangle for play. So R play equals new rectangle. Now there are a few different constructors for rectangle. There's just this one, which is blank. I don't know why you would use that. Actually, I've, I've never used that in my life. But uh, there's also the um, the one with four parameters. And that is, you know, the, the X and Y location the top of, of the top left corner of the button of the rectangle. And, um, and the width and the height of the rectangle. So let's just put a rectangle at 20, 50 just to demonstrate. Um, and how wide should we make it? Buttons are usually 80 by 40. They're not usually 80 by 40, but 80 by 40 is a good size. Um, and now we need to actually assign the boundaries of this button to being this rectangle. So play dot set bounds is going to equal to rectangle. Um, and uh, where is it? Ah, oh, play. Awesome. Now notice you could have also um, set it equal to you know 20, 50. 80, 40. You could have just done it here. Like, you didn't actually need to create a rectangle. Um, I just prefer to, okay? I, I like to sort of keep myself organized with, with rectangles. That's just me, you know? And finally, let's actually add window.add that button to our window. Now, before we actually draw that onto the screen, we actually need to initialize this uh, this J panel. We haven't made this a J panel yet. And the way we make this a, a J panel is, first of all, um, let's, um, let's go get content pane and let's set that um, let's add the window so we've added a uh, we've added the panel I guess um, and also we need to uh, set the layout equal to uh, we'll just we'll just set it to null all right cool so now let's launch this and see if we get our button okay we did not get our button that is because I forgot to actually draw the button so down here let's just go draw buttons and let's see if that works. Okay, awesome. So we've got a button now. Um, it's working. It doesn't do anything. It just it's a button. All right. Cool. Simple, simple old button. Um, now the other thing, the thing that I reckon most of you are gonna say right now is, whoa, dude, that's like a Java button. Like, what happened to like my standard, I don't know, Windows buttons? Like, I want a button that, that looks like this or like this or like this or whatever. Why does mine look like a Java button? And that's no problem, okay? If you don't like the style of Java buttons and you really want to make it look like a window, like a Windows button, all you have to do is go try UI Manager dot set look and feel to UI Manager dot get system look and feel class name. 
Alright? And again, you have to catch that exception, obviously. Just catch a normal exception E, and we'll just print the stack drive for good measure, and that is it. Let's launch it. Oh, look at that. Check it out. We've got a normal Windows button now. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. Alright, one thing we actually want to do at the moment is probably probably place this in the middle. Now we could actually finally, you know, work out the actual middle of this, or we could just um, easily use math to work it out for us. Um, first of all though, I'm actually going to make a few more integers. I want to make a button width, because I want all my buttons to be the same size, and if I want to resize them, you know, I want. I just want them to assign, I just want to assign it to a variable, because that's a good measure. Get okay, copy and paste that, we'll call this height, and we'll set that equal to 40. Alright, cool. So let's replace 80 uh, let's 80 with button width and 40 with button height and um, cool so let's so how do we work out you know the middle of something easily um, all we have to do is let's just get the width so width uh, divided by 2 we're going to divide the width of the actual frame by 2 and we're going to subtract the button width away from that so button width divided by 2 and uh, if my maths is correct and it usually is uh, you can see that this button is in the middle of the screen. Awesome. Um, and it's sort of 50 in the air. We can just, I don't know, we can put that to like 90. I don't know. That should be cool. Yeah, awesome. So this is in the middle of the screen now, and it's um, it's 90. Okay, cool. You can't actually see that because of my uh, my dual screen. It's called Ultra Mon. It's really useful if you have multiple monitors. Let me just close that, though. You probably see like all the stuff come up to here now. My screen recorder, yeah, cool. Um, so uh, let's debug the display. Yeah, now you can see it says my front launcher. Awesome. So we got play button. Awesome. So that's pretty much it. Like that's that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's let's do the same for the remaining uh, three buttons. Let's just copy this and one, two, three. Paste that three times, and just change this to options. Um, let me just copy and paste that into everywhere it needs to be copied and pasted into. Um, including here and here. Um, what else do we have? Help. Let's copy and paste help into everywhere it needs to be copied and pasted into. Oh, oh help. And quit, finally. Quit. We need to copy and paste quit into everywhere. Huh. I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, and we obviously need to rename our buttons. So let's call this one options. We'll call this one help, and we'll call this one quit. Okay, awesome. Let's uh, let's try and run it and see what, what we get. Ooh, crash. Okay, interesting. Um, what's the null pointer exception? Where? Help. Oh, there we go. All right, so we didn't inst instantiate help. We should have. My bad. Again, I'm tired. All right, awesome. So now we got this with uh. Uh. <laughs> all right. Again, my bad. The buttons are all on top of each other. So let's um let's come here and oh how how wide are the buttons? Um how high? Forty. Okay. So we'll just leave ten pixels of padding and just basically add fifty to this. So I've left a gap of fifty pixels between each button. There we go. Awesome. So now we've got four awesome looking buttons, and we might actually add an image here or something or a logo. I don't know. We'll see. We might make the background black. I don't know. We'll 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 figure something out, guys. Just post a comment if you want me to stylize this, stylize this in a particular way, like put a video behind it. I'm kidding. That's stupid. Um, but yeah, and that is going to be the uh, the end of this tutorial. Um, again, I don't have time. Next week, next Sunday, I'll show you guys how to actually, how to easily add functionality to these buttons so that when you hit play, it's going to close this window and open up our normal game window. When you hit options, it, it can open like a new window, help, it'll open like a new window and quit, it'll actually just quit out, quit out of this launcher. So I'll show you guys how to add action listeners and stuff like that. But yeah, I have to go guys. So that was it. Um, again, if you want me to actually add something to this launcher, we will be making an in-game launcher in a future episode, okay? We will be. But for now, we're making a GUI launcher because um, they're really cool. But um, a graphical menu will come later. But if there's anything you want me to add to this, I don't know, like an about, I don't, I don't know. Just comment below and uh, and I'll see into it. Anyway, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you guys next Sunday. Bye.